John Lantini with Automail Location. We're here at ANG 2013. I'm here with Jesse Pridemore. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. This convention is fantastic. Excellent. That fantastic only first day? Yeah. I mean, we had fun yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, how did you first get started in the cosplay? Uh, so in 1999, uh, for Halloween, I was just super unimpressed with everything that was available costume-wise, and I was really obsessed with Sailor Moon, like every girl my age was, and since my birthday is on Halloween, my dad said that he would buy me the materials to make my own costume as my birthday present. So I got a white dance leotard and like I got a skirt and, and when I was younger I didn't understand how gathering worked. So I cut the skirt and couldn't understand why it was so much longer after I had cut it open. So then I like double layered it and had it on and like had these really bad bows made with like really bad ribbon and like spray blued my hair and I have really dark hair naturally so it didn't even show up and like like, made a really crappy tiara and I had like one of those uh, digital uh, diaries that girls my age at the time had and like painted her symbol on the top of it. And I was just like, yeah, Sailor Mercury. I made it in two days and uh, there's no pictures of it. <laughs> But uh, it was so much fun, and then the next year, uh, my uncle took me to my first convention. So it all went downhill from there. So we burned the evidence of those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> all right, it says in your bios we already went over. You started this 13 years ago. Yep. What has been the biggest change in the community since you have started? I mean, there's been a lot of shifts in the community since I've started. One of the things that I've, I've noticed, and I actually, I'm, I'm kind of jealous, there's just... People who start off now have so much more available to them now than we did when we first started. So they're so much better than we are. And I, I see some of these kids that are starting and they've only been doing it for a few years and I'm just like, well, I'm gonna go change now. <laughs> and uh, so definitely availability of better materials, definitely better wigs. Uh, which wigs was like where everybody got wigs when, when I started mm -hmm. or if they even used wigs at all most of them didn't and um, it's also interesting to see the shift between it legitimately being a hobby and then I guess people lately have been complaining about people doing it for attention I mean I don't care because they don't affect me but mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm still doing it for fun I yeah. still have a lot of fun running around in goofy costumes but uh, so I guess that's been a big shift too and I mean, people always talk about the drama and stuff, but I feel like that's in every community, just to different degrees. I've heard some crazy stuff about lawyer communities, and they're all lawyers, so it's a billion times worse. But um, I, it's definitely a lot bigger. Like, that's probably the biggest thing, is it's huge now. Regular, normal, everyday people know what cosplay is now, and I think that's kind of cool, so. So bigger and more resources. Yes, more resources. <laughs> In your bio it also states that you had a chance to judge for the Euro Cosplay Championships. What was that like for you? I never left the country before aside from Canada, but I don't count them because they're a hat. And uh, it's in London and it was a lot of fun. And when they approached me about it, there's actually a funny story behind it. I had gotten tickets to go to the Tron 30th anniversary in, in the Chinese theater. Never been to the Chinese theater and I'm super obsessed with Tron, as you can tell. And uh, two hours after I got my tickets, I got the email from them asking them if I would come out and judge for them. And of course I was like, well, I gotta go to London. So uh, it was very humbling. It was very awesome meeting people from other countries. There's a big language barrier too. Only two of the judges actually spoke English. One of them spoke Portuguese and his English was bare minimum best. And um, so it took a lot longer to judge than normal because between the contestants who don't speak English and one of our judges that didn't speak English, there was a lot of translations going on. But um, it was so cool seeing people from other countries and seeing the things that they do and the stuff that's available for them because people don't realize how spoiled we are in the United States because we have so much more available to us here than they do in other countries mm -hmm. so seeing what they do with less is even more impressive and uh, I, it was it was so much fun going to London and like being in London and just being like I get to be the dumb American that does rocks on the wrong side of the road and doesn't understand what it means to stand in queue and um, it was great I, I would love to relive it again if they ever invite me out and it was fantastic um, you're also a professional model for some of the largest anime companies here in the United States. How has that experience been? 
So I've been doing that since 2004, and um, I have a lot of fun doing it because I like talking to people about anime <laughs> and video games, and um, it's a lot. Most of the time, I'm doing a character that I really, really like and that I'm really passionate about. So it's even more fun that I get to run around as my own character and do really silly events. I actually learned to play the drums for one of the events that I did because I was doing K-On and I was being Ritsu, and Ritsu's my spirit animal. And uh, she, so I actually learned how to start learning how to play the drums so that I would at least know, look like I knew what I was doing, mm -hmm. and not just you know. Like All of this. <laughs> so uh, lots of stuff like that have come up where I've actually learned new things just from doing promotions. But some of the stuff that the companies come up with for promotions are, have been a lot of fun. Like that one is probably one of the most fun ones I've ever done. And uh, when, when Bandai did their Lucky Star promotion, I got to be Haruhi in that because she was the promotion the year before. So I got to kind of be a jerk to all the Lucky Star people. Nice. And uh, so it's... I don't know, I still do it, so I, I guess I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> you like this one. Most cosplayers deal with the main issue of keeping their wigs in good shape. What advice do you have for them? They are actually making fun of me earlier because one of my wigs <laughs> fell out of the wig bag, so it was like a big jumbled mess. <laughs> Um, buy really nice quality wigs so that if you do just shove them into places, you can brush them out really easily. And by brush, I mean comb. And, um... Motion's oil sheen or olive, uh, the olive spray, work really well with uh, detangling uh, synthetic wigs. Um, but really, it comes down to quality. If you have a really nice quality wig, it'll brush out really easily. So find something with really soft fibers and uh, definitely the heat resistant ones because being able to straighten a wig with a straightener is so awesome. But yeah, so maybe I'm not the best person to ask for this advice. <laughs> No, there's plenty of good advice in there. <laughs> okay, uh, an anime series that was great, but not so much good cosplay in it. I really like Psychopaths right now. I'm a big fan of Gen, and I think everything he writes is gold. But Psychopaths, like the costumes are really simple, so you can wear them. And unless you have like the really big guns, nobody's really gonna recognize what you're from. Yeah. Uh, I feel that way about a lot of fate costumes too. I'm a really super big fate nerd and most of the costumes are just normal street clothes. So, you know, I guess anything with normal clothes because then you'll just walk around and be like, hey, look at that person in normal clothes. Around, yeah. <laughs> okay, the opposite end of that question would be um, an anime series that wasn't so good, but great cosplay. Getsuman to Hekimina, worst anime series ever made, but the costumes are amazing, and I'm a really big fan of Densha Toko, which is what it was introduced in, and then because of how popular Densha Toko was, they made an anime series to go with the figure that they made for it, so uh, I ended up cosplaying the main character Mina because I, I just like the fact that they have big vegetables on their butts, and it looked like a lot of fun, so... Okay. You had a cosplay, or I'm sorry, you had a good convention story last weekend. Look, let me hear about that. <laughs> All right, so I was at Anime Matsuri last weekend, and uh, there was a girl in the elevator with me. Uh, people don't realize this, but I'm actually really short. I'm only five foot three, and and that's on a good day. But uh, this girl is standing next to me, and, and she's like, has anyone ever told you that you look like Jesse Pridemore? And I was just like, yeah, I hear that all the time. And then this girl's just like, yeah, but she's taller than you. And I just went, oh, that trolling kind of reversed back on me. So then I was like, yeah, I'm actually Jesse. She's like, I'm so sorry. I've only seen you in pictures. I thought you were so much taller. I was like, I wish I was so much taller. But yeah, that was uh, definitely one of my favorite convention experiences. <laughs> That story probably made your weekend. It did. I was like, guys, you got to hear this story. I've probably told that story a hundred times now. <laughs> um, tell us about Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play and your involvement. So ever since I was a kid, and I think anybody that watched Nickelodeon always wanted to go to the Worldwide Day of Play. And um, I, I do regular booth bathing too. So I actually have an agent for that. And I had the wonderful... I've got, I'm crafting, so I have stuff all over my hands, but I had a wonderful opportunity of being asked to do um, 
the Nickelodeon was promoting their Dora the Explorer dancing game. Okay. So I had the wonderful experience of working with the Worldwide Day of Play and Nickelodeon and 2K Games to promote this game. So I got to dance with kids for like four hours and it was a lot of fun. And I'm a big uh, promoter of health and fitness, especially in kids. So it meant a lot to me to be able to work with kids and show them fun ways to be active. If that's, you know, they get to dance with their favorite characters from Nickelodeon shows. So. Um, any upcoming projects, cosplay or otherwise, you want fans to know about? Oh, I mean, I'm always working on new costumes, but I am actually working on a movie this summer called Black Hat. And we have some great people tied to this. I'm actually, I have a small role in it, but I don't care because my role is hilarious. <laughs> but uh, you guys should definitely check it out. They're on Facebook. Like, Black Hat is in, like, hat. Um, I read the script. The script is super solid. It's about a girl that really wants to be a manga artist. So she goes to Otakon to win a contest to have her book published. And I, I was not expecting it, but the script is actually really good and really solid. And even people that aren't into that world are really going to enjoy the movie. So I was like, hey, this is really awesome to be a part of this. Um, is there any way for fans to keep up with you on the internet? And a final message for your fans. Uh, so I go by Rufflebutt now. So on Facebook, I have a page called Rufflebutt. On DeviantArt, I'm Rufflebutt Cosplay. And on AC Paradise, I'm Rufflebutt. Um, that's all. I post tutorials. I have so many tutorials now. I spend so much time. If there's something you guys want to see done, let me know. I will more than happy to make a tutorial for it. And thanks for all the support over the years, guys. You guys have been fantastic. I can't ask for better people.